Well, uh, Brian, this is going to be tough. Uh, it was a year ago this morning that many of us woke up to the news that Andrew Breitbart had uh, suddenly and shockingly passed away from heart failure. It was just past midnight on March 1st when that happened. And uh, many of us, uh, those of us who worked with him and those of us who were friends of his, I consider myself both of those things, we're still reeling from it, frankly. And today is a day where a lot of us are going to be reflecting on it. In fact, if you go over to Breitbart.com, you'll see that the entire front page is dedicated to remember our friend, and uh, here's a friend of his who's joining us now very graciously, considering he's one of those Hollywood types. I think they sleep until noon our time, or their time for that matter. Uh, he is Adam Baldwin, and uh, he was a frequent contributor to Big Hollywood, continues to have his buying line up at Breitbart, and uh, and again, a friend of Andrew's. Yeah. Adam, thanks so much for joining us. And not incidentally, in. I used to love him on Chuck. Well, yeah, yeah. Chuck was a fantastic show, and Adam was, uh, let's face it, the best thing in it. Hey, Adam, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, Larry. I consider myself a friend of yours as well. It's true. It's true. Wow, and that's high, that's high uh, it is. It is high praise for Adam that I would deign to be his friend. So, uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been up for, I'll have you know, I've been up for hours. Oh, good. All right, then. A hey, Adam, I want to ask you, I mean, we're going to hear a lot today about Andrew Breitbart's uh, contribution to new media. Um, we're going to hear about his contribution to the conservative movement and how he was one of the first people to really go out there and and fight down in the trenches on behalf of conservatives. I'd like you to first start by reflecting on what he meant out there in Hollywood to, to the culture and the entertainment business, because when he first launched his first blog, it was big Hollywood that he wanted to do. It was about the entertainment industry. Why? Well, his, one of his main mantras is that politics is downstream of culture. And when he'd had his epiphany politically, he realized that the way to approach if you really wanted to reverse the trend towards cultural Marxism, is that you had to tell the story of how the cult, uh, the media was skewing the culture towards mm, away from family values, away from constitutional uh, Republican principles, and so that's why he would try to expose it as best he could. And having grown up in Hollywood, he was familiar with the culture and and the people, and you know. He, he, he was the tip of the spear. He took it, took it head on. So you were a good friend of his. No, I want you to pull back into your repertoire of experiences with Andrew Breitbart and tell me a story that sort of exemplifies what the man was all about. Hmm. Well, I... Uh, and, and, and if it involves alcohol, that's fine. Too. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll tell a story. I, I, I did a little blog post. I hope, I hope it gets up on Breitbart today. But... Uh, he loved baseball. Andrew loved baseball. Great family man. And uh, we shared tickets one season, Andrew and I did. And uh, we, we split him up sitting on the, the bleacher bench watching his kid play Little League baseball. And one day, he, uh, he, I had the tickets, and I was taking my family to the game down at Dodger Stadium. And he called me up. He had four tickets to a VIP box. And he said, can you come? I got these great seats. And I said, no, I'm already on my way. And he said, oh, okay, well, I'll see you at the game. And lo and behold, we drive up to the kiosks, and there's Andrew not wanting to waste two tickets because he was only able to find one guy to go with. He didn't want to waste the two tickets, so he was asking people, hey, who, who needs two? Who wants two? <laughs> Andrew, what the hell are you doing? Get in the car. You know, this was, uh, this was at a time where, you know, he was uh, quite visible uh, during, uh, you know, picture pit controversy. And uh, he said, no, no, I'm not going to let these things go to waste. And he eventually did give them, away, give them away, and so they didn't go to waste. And he was a big-hearted guy like that. Hmm. He loved baseball, loved his family, and, you know, just yeah. people don't really know that, that, that there's always a, that, that nice guy behind, you know, the, uh, the quote-unquote, cultural warrior well a happy it, cultural warrior. absolutely a, a big happy warrior. And, and you know it's funny you should say that brian happy warrior because i know this about adam and you know here it's been a year now so i think we can say stuff that we've always kind of kept quiet about first of all people need to know that adam was there in the breitbart offices the morning that i showed up after it was announced that andrew had passed away and he stayed there you were there every day for about two weeks i think uh past the funeral and past the launch of the new site you were such a moral support you were out there getting meals for people um and and i never been able to thank you for that so thanks but you know there's another thing about uh you and andrew and your relationship oftentimes you would continue to proactively remind andrew to be a happy warrior you were in a way 
I, I think it's fair to say uh, an inspiration for Andrew, I think, in terms of keeping him from turning into the caricature that they're trying to make of him as this angry, shouting man. Can you sort of talk about that that duality that Andrew had and the struggle that he had to keep it light and keep it fun and keep it the happy warrior? Well, not no one single person can save the world, uh, you know, unless you're God. Uh, so he... he, he um, even though he wrote the book, excuse me while I save the world, uh, then <laughs> that was tongue in cheek. And he realized that one guy alone couldn't do it, and we had to keep reminding him of that. His brain worked so fast, he was going after so much information all at once that uh, there were times where he would let his guard down and, and, and feed into the, uh, you know, the negative nature of the people that were attacking him. And so it was good to just remind him, hey, kid, just uh, you keep laughing, happy warrior, and, and if, if one, anything describes Andrew the best, it's that deep, guffawing belly laugh that he would have whenever anything struck his fancy. And he just he he reveled in in the battle, but he also he loved life. He was a, he was a true bon vivant. Yeah. In, in fact, I always thought it was interesting that the people who were with him, he'd gone out to a bar earlier in the evening and, and just encountered people, you know, complete strangers. They talked, what a fun guy. He was, you know, we had a spirited discussion, but it was a great discussion. Yeah. And I mean, I think that encapsulated, that was probably the, some of the highest praise, is that he fought for the things he believed in, and he made the adamant case for the things he believed in, but he always did it in sort of an uplifting and positive way without really slamming the other side. I made an effort uh, to get him together with some of my folks, friends on the left from uh, Hollywood, a uh, director and also a, a professor at UCLA, and they were all loaded for bear, ready to have these great big arguments with him, and he was just too much of a charmer. Yeah. And and they, they ended up loving the guy. There's a professor named Thompson at UCLA who wrote a nice blog post about what he was expecting from Andrew and didn't get it. Yeah. And... Uh, Ended up loving the guy. That and that's a lesson for all of us, I think, to sort of disarm and not not be that caricature that people expect. We're almost out of time, Adam, and I really do appreciate you joining us. Adam Baldwin's our guest. We're talking about Andrew Breitbart. You're an observer of the of the of politics, of culture, of the entertainment world, all the things that meant a lot to Andrew. It's been a year without Andrew. Uh, what, what's your observation on, on how we're doing and going forward? Uh, where where is Andrew's legacy and how it affects what we're doing here? Andrew's legacy continues because people's eyes are, are opened and awakened to the fact that it's it's a long war. Uh, there is no end to uh, politics. History goes on forever, and uh, you can't let it you can't let it destroy you. You just have to keep fighting the good fight, never give up, and you know all the rest of the cliches. And I think that's the legacy that he would he would want to be remembered for, and taking on the bullies head on. Yeah. As, uh, as our good friend uh, Ben Shapiro writes, and that's what... Right. Uh that's what Andrew did, and he wants us to continue continue on doing. Yeah, thank you, Adam Baldwin. I know this was hard for you. We can hear it in your voice. I'm sure people can hear it in my voice, too. And uh, have a good day today. Uh, it, it's going to be a good day. Thanks for joining us, Adam Thanks. Baldwin. Hey, 